In the year 2004, the game Half-Life 2, one of the most critically acclaimed of all time, was released. And shortly after its release, the creator Valve made its source code available to the public. This would quickly be used to create Gary's Mod, one of the most well-known and impactful mods of all time. But what exactly is a source code, and why is it such a big deal when one of them gets leaked or intentionally released to the public? Now, as usual, I'm gonna have to do a ton of simplifying here because this is a very complex topic, but hopefully I can give you a general overview of what's going on. Now, source code essentially refers to one of two things, assembly code or programming code, also known as high-level code. These two things aren't understood by computers, though. Computers understand this, which is machine code or compiled code. This is literally the stuff that tells the components in your computer what to do where to put things, what to change when, and so on. If you take the spaces, tabs, indentations out of this, and you reduce each of these commands down to the bits they represent, you get this. Even if you're somebody who has no idea what coding is, I would assume you'd probably rather work with this than this. In short, the source code allows you to look at the structure of a program and modify it. If you just buy the program, like a game, or Sony Vegas, or Photoshop, you can run the program and use it, but all you're getting is this. This is what's inside an executable, or .exe file. The computer can run the program with this as intended just fine, but you can't look under the hood and modify the program itself unless you have the source code. The fundamental point here is that because of how complex modern programs are, there is a big difference between what computers understand and what humans understand. We call the stuff that humans understand source code. Now, I want to do a quick thought experiment to get your mind sort of in the right place. Imagine if I was your secretary and you were trying to plan out my itinerary for the day. One of the things you want me to do is go to the store and buy a loaf of bread. Simple task, right? But within that task, there's all these sort of implied tasks. For example, walk to your car, then get in your car, put the key in the ignition, turn it on, drive this way, take this right, then this left, park, go to the aisle, get the bread, check out and pay for it, all of that. But you don't want to have to tell me to do each one of those things. You want to be able to tell me, hey, go to the store and get some bread. And then go to the bank, deposit this check, go to the post office and mail this letter. I should be able to figure out all of the tasks within that task myself. And this is more or less the relationship between high level language and assembly code. This is a short bit of code written in C which is a high-level language. This is the equivalent amount of what's going on in assembly code, and this is the equivalent amount of machine code. With this great website called c2assembly.com, I can highlight this line of code in C, and it will show me the equivalent amount of assembly code needed to accomplish the same task. Even something as simple as this closed bracket, which closes off this conditional statement, has three lines of assembly code composing it. Using the programming language C instead of assembly not only saves time typing, but it also makes it much easier to just look at this and know more or less what role this line of code serves in your program at large. But both of these are considered source code, and that's because they're much simpler than machine code. Even as complicated as this looks, you would probably rather work with it than this. This is the machine code, and it's basically just assembly code spoken in a different language. Instead of load, we have 001. Instead of store, we have 010. Instead of add, we have 011. And instead of 13, we have 001101. My videos on binary and Boolean logic go a bit more into this if you're interested, but for now, all you need to know is that computers only understand this kind of code because everything they do is with binary states. Assembly code is basically just a translation from machine code to something that resembles English. While high-level code and assembly code have the quality of being easy to read in common, assembly code and machine code have the quality of being each individual task in common. So going by the earlier example of me being your secretary, if high-level code is go to the store, and assembly code is walk out the door, go to your car, drive to the store, walk in, and so on, then machine code is basically each of those same tasks, but spoken in a language that I can understand. The translation between all of these is done with what is known as a compiler, an interpreter, or an assembler. 
Now, there are differences between each of these, but they're not important for now. All of these are designed to take code that humans write and break it down into code that computers understand. It is also worth noting that to this very day, some people prefer to work with assembly code, and there's certain types of professions where doing so is in fact a necessity. On top of that, if we go back far enough, the original programmers were writing directly in machine code by doing things like flipping switches and punching holes in cards, which would let the computer know what to do. As I said earlier, this is all very simplified, but I hope I gave you an idea of why programming languages are necessary and how much is going on behind the scenes of a typical piece of software. As always, I hope I helped. Liking, subscribing, and commenting go a long way, and thanks for watching.